Hello everyone. Welcome to the White Army Radiology Reality Session on Basics of CT Scan. Today it's our privilege to have Dr. Prajwit Rai, MD in Radio Diagnosis from AJ Institute of Medical Science. We shall begin the session. Over to you, sir. So I'll just revise uh, what we have discussed in the previous class once. Uh, then uh, I'll just discuss about how we uh, see CT images of abdomen few points about how to recognize organs and stuff like that and then if possible i'll try finishing physics also today of mri also today itself so that uh, next class or not we can only talk about any clinical stuff okay so we knew how a ct room was which had a gantry which had a x-ray table and then uh, ct is nothing but uh, we are studying the slices of images uh, and we knew that it started with the conventional tomography and then eventually we developed a uh, single slice, uh, like first generation CT in which it was only linear. It took a lot of time to do. Then we improved it by making it a cone beam CT and increasing the number of detectors in one row. Uh, and then we made uh, still more wider fan beam. And what exactly we have now is this kind of very wide beam or the third generation CT. But it's not exactly the third generation CT we, what we have. We have improved over this third generation CT and we are using it. And we also had fifth generation and sixth generation. Uh, fifth generation which was, fifth generation is not used much. And even the fourth generation is uh, not used much because it became very expensive and it was not of much use. Helical CT is what we use now in which the patient is moving whenever the acquisition is happening. So this is a the variation of a third generation CT in which the detector and the tube moves when the patient moves as well. What we use here is a slip ring technology. This is what the question that was asked. And multi-detector CT is the, again, the most advanced version that we use now in which not only the helical CT or not only the third generation wide fan beam CT, we also use multiple rows of detectors. So this mainly we can use for the cardiac imaging because heart is moving very fast. If you take multiple slices, at each slice, the heart is at different position. The image will not be clear. So what we'd use now, the multi-detector CT is mainly for the heart imaging and anything which moves very fast or any bezel, if it is uh, vibrating fast, all those things, multi-detector CT is of uh, much of use. And then uh, we saw how the collimation we used to do, and we know what is a pitch. So ideally, we have to keep pitch one, but if you keep higher pitch, then you, the acquisition is faster, but we are missing some information. If it is less than one, we are increasing the radiation dose to the patient. And we know that now we use the solid state detector. We don't use xenon gas detector is not used anymore. That will be a question sometimes, what type of detector is used. Xenon gas-based detector is not used anymore. And what we uh, use in CT is unlike in X-ray, we use voxel. Voxel is nothing but pixel with some depth to it. And we had reconstructions, uh, the back, uh, the CT numbers, we had discussed CT numbers, which is based on the attenuation coefficient, Okay, which is based on the attenuation coefficient. And uh, the, we had different type of uh, image projections. That is uh, the reconstructions we are doing using the back projections in the olden days. Now we have iterative reconstruction. Iterative reconstruction is better for the patient dose. Once we come into this, we again uh, take the image uh, raw data and we uh, reconstruct the image into whatever the uh, reconstruction algorithm that we want. We can put it in the bone algorithm. We can put it in the soft tissue algorithm. Uh, based on this, our image uh, appearance will vary. That, And we can even put in the lung window, the bone window. So whichever window we want, and then we can see the imaging. And the dual energy CT is used to characterize the tissues. It can easily characterize the tissues and it can differentiate the tissues. And we can eliminate the unwanted parts in the CT image. Okay, so we had discussed about the thin slice CT and thick slice CT. Now, whatever I'm showing here is a plain CT. Okay, now why do I say this is a plain CT? If I stop here, why do I say it's a plain CT? If you see at this structure, so now let's keep it little interactive. I'm just opening the chat box. Okay, so what 
do you think is this structure here okay sorry okay so what do you think is this structure here what do you think is this structure just you have to tell the first letter enough what do you, you just have to type the first letter everyone keep interacting or you guys can use the voice also if you want what is this structure that we are seeing here this black area what what does that represent can you guys hear me uh, yes sir we can hear you uh, a lung sir black structure so first thing is we are seeing something black okay so we are seeing something black here we are seeing something is white here okay so we know that this is very white that means that out of every structure this is appearing most white structure so it has very high h value okay we have discussed what is an h value it is nothing but the attenuation coefficient of any tissue with respect to water okay it's attenuation coefficient of any structure with respect to water okay so this is having very high h so it is looking white this is having very low h so it is looking black so this contains air this contains something very high attenuation this is nothing but bone so we know that bone is very high attenuation you know that lung is very low attenuation so in this image we know that this is lung this is bone now if you see here in the lung there will be small small strands of uh, lung parenchyma which you are not seeing because this is in the mediastinal window or the soft tissue window so here we, we will not be able to uh, differentiate a small uh, uh, tissue of uh, lung parenchyma from the air okay so here mainly we can see the mediastinum okay we can see mainly the mediastinum because the soft tissue window okay so this is bone now i am telling this is bone and this is lung which is filled with air now what is this structure here what is this structure here so what is this structure here that we are seeing so this is nothing but it is heart okay so this is heart that is very easy so what will be this structure here okay what will be this structure so this is heart we know that so what will be this structure which is round and which is present posterior to the heart towards the left so we know that in a image any image we see this is always a right towards my left hand side is always a right towards my right hand side it is always left so what is the structure which is coming here so this structure is nothing but the descending thoracic aorta okay so this is nothing but the descending thoracic aorta now see the image here how the color of the descending thoracic aorta so can you see this brightness almost same as a muzzle attenuation so this of uh, uh, whatever the blood inside the heart is also almost close to the muzzle attenuation okay so this is nothing but the flowing blood okay this is how the flowing blood looks so this is aorta this is heart in the heart also we can see that this is the uh, the our uh, the muzzle of the heart and we can we cannot differentiate the muzzle and the fluid that well though but we we know that this is heart and inside the heart there is blood and we know this is aorta and inside the aorta there is blood okay and if you keep going down we can see that so this is how we go down now if you see this image we have come down now can you tell me what is the structure again what is this structure now so this round thing is nothing but aorta okay so this round thing is nothing but aorta now on the either side of the aorta there is something which is going like this okay so this what is this structure here what is this line that we are seeing here what is this line that we are seeing here so this line that we are seeing see you have to you have to see okay now see very carefully now i am going back to the the previous uh, section now you see you trace now i am going down okay so from here i am starting to go down okay okay one minute okay, from here i am starting to go down now observe carefully the aorta descending thoracic aorta and when you see that line you see how exactly is that line related to the aorta so aorta i am going down 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 now aorta i have still is the lung and see suddenly when there is lung is stopping this structure is coming so this is nothing but the diaphragm okay so this is one section of the diaphragm that we are seeing and through the diaphragm the aorta is coming down okay 
so if you see this image it is nothing but is iota and this is the diaphragm okay so this is nothing but the diaphragm which is now see how the diaphragm will be going along the surface of the spleen it is going along the surface of the liver so we know that there is lung here black structure is nothing but lung you know that the white structure here is nothing but the liver okay on the right side there is a huge soft tissue density structure that is liver on the left side there is a smaller soft tissue density structure that is nothing but the spleen okay so both are soft tissue density structure one on the right one on the left so we know that this is liver this is spleen okay so it is clear till now so this anything we know that the lung and the liver are separated by what lung and liver are separated by diaphragm so whatever the structure which is passing here should be diaphragm okay so whatever the structure which is dividing the lung from the uh, liver or lung from the spleen is the diaphragm because we know that if this is the diaphragm below that sits the liver below that sits the spleen above that sits the heart okay so now this much is clear now if is if i tell that instead of this black area if i am seeing this area is showing a crescentric white shaped structure okay so in this same plane ct if i am seeing this crescentric white area so what do you think is this white area or a hyper density if you see in this area so what do you think at this area is okay yes it is pleural effusion good so this is how we detect a pleural effusion now imagine if i am telling that the this whatever the white area instead of present here it is present in this region that is in front of the diaphragm in this image if it is present in front of the diaphragm so what do you think this is if it is present in the front of the diaphragm so now what do you think it is okay now again if some have the doubt why why is this lung coming posteriorly and why is this uh the abdominal parts are coming anteriorly so if you see the di diagram of a diaphragm the so diaphragm is not straight diaphragm is actually having a convex upward appearance so if i take a section here if i take a section here if this is posterior to anterior you can see that there is lung here then there is diaphragm then there is uh, so this is from the right to left i'm telling right to left so there is lung here so there is diaphragm then there is abdominal structures then there is lung and then there is again the uh, lung and the the skin now if you same thing if you see even in the anterior posterior direction okay if you see from anterior posterior direction again the diaphragm is in the same shape so again if you cut here we can see that there is lung here then the abdomen then the lung then the posterior so everywhere if you see that if you take a section this is how the diaphragm is placed but if you see clearly in anterior posterior direction the diaphragm is almost like this so diaphragm is more it goes more down in the posterior aspect okay so diaphragm goes more down in the posterior aspect so even before you see the pleural effusion in the ap we, we always see in the lateral view because posterior this is the most dependent part of the diaphragm okay most dependent part of the pleural space okay whatever now if i go to this image if i go to this image we know that this is the lung we know that this is the liver we know that this is the diaphragm we know this is the lung this is the spleen and this is the diaphragm now if there is fluid here if there is fluid here it is in the pleural cavity or in the lung or in the thoracic cavity if there is a fluid here it is in the abdominal cavity now this fluid which is anterior to the diaphragm can be because of the hemorrhage which has happened because of the a splenic rupture or the the liver rupture or it can be just an ascites good pallavi it is it can be ascites so this is how we just identify the different uh structures here and okay now this is liver this is spleen okay now this is liver this is spleen so what do you think this structure is this huge structure a bag like structure 
could it be ruptured liver abscess yes it can be ruptured liver abscess so if there is a flu okay i'm talking about the previous thing if there is a fluid here someone asked is can it be a ruptured liver abscess yes it can be ruptured liver abscess okay so if what do you think this structure is what do you think this structure is yes yes this is telling it is stomach very good okay it is present in between the liver and the spleen a large structure which is having some debris here and then on top of it there is what is this what is this inside the stomach what is what do you think in this area is there inside the stomach it is the air good sashank is telling it's air yes it is air okay but aishwarya this is not fundus okay why this is not fundus when you are standing when you are standing the stomach this is how the stomach is okay when you are standing the air will accumulate in the fundus but when you are lying down air will be accumulating throughout because entire thing is forming okay so this is this is how the stomach looks when you are lying down okay the the lower part is where the debris or the food content or the fluid accumulates above that anterior to it the air accumulates so this is not the fundus okay so this is not the fundus but this is the anterior surface of the stomach okay so this is the anterior surface of the stomach so you do, you should not fix your mind whenever you see a ct into uh, like this air present in the stomach is fundus this is not how the it's in x ray we say all that because x ray is only two dimensional so in this three dimensional you always know that patient is always lying down in a ct we will not take an erect ct we cannot take an erect ct okay so always a patient is in a lying down position either prone or supine that that will be dependent okay now here if you see this this is nothing but the anterior surface of the stomach or anterior uh, part of the stomach is containing air posteriorly we have the food content and the fluid okay sir so the air will be in the area around the lesser curvature okay now someone is asking will there be air around the lesser curvature why are you saying air okay so this you are asking why is there air around the lesser curvature so this is not air okay this is not air if you are thinking this is air this is not air and if you see very clearly i think the image is clear there also we can see some white white structure here okay so this is not air and also if you see this this is actually air you compare that with this this is looking pitch black okay it is clearly it is looking blacker but this doesn't look that clearly black okay this is having some haziness so this is actually not air this is nothing but what it can be so can anyone guess what this can be the answer is there in the image if you see any structure you check what other place which looks like this you check any other place in the seat in this city image which looks like this see in the entire image other than air where else it looks like this of the same where else it looks like this see gall bladder should contain fluid okay gall bladder should contain fluid it will look almost like this gall bladder contains fluid it looks almost like this so it is not gall bladder see in the entire image okay focus at this area what structure is appearing like this at this area concentrate at this area what is appearing the same density as this this area concentrate on this area this is lung it is looking more blacker it is not like this now tell me concentrate on this area can you see this looking white and this also looking white and in between this is something is looking slightly blacker can you see this yes so so now you know what is this now you guys know what is this so this is nothing but subcutaneous fat this is also fat see now what you guys are doing is don't interpret a ct like an x ray it is not like it is brighter and it is looking white it is that it is looking black it is this you have to always compare now why i tell this because ct is not just a image and just changing the contrast it depends on what is the window width what is the window level i have kept so based on where i have kept the window width where i have kept the window level based on that the density also changes so this window whatever i have set here are adjusting towards a soft tissue densities 
it can differentiate a fluid it can differentiate the soft tissue but it cannot differentiate a fat clearly from air okay it cannot differentiate fat clearly from air still it can differentiate little bit see this is looking pitch black you know it is air but this is having slight haze okay so that's how you identify okay you just have to compare always okay so this is how you see a ct so you see this subcutaneous fat you see this and it both look same so this is nothing but the mesenteric fat okay the mesenteric fat okay so this image is clear for you guys now let's go to the next image so this okay let's scroll it down and see so now i am again scrolling going down from here okay i'm going down 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 i have come to this section now i have paused again now i am pausing again now tell me what is this structure here what is this structure here what is this structure here now again you have to compare it now we know what is this we know what is this what is this what is this what is a what is a yes good aishwarya you have got it yes good pallavi so a is nothing but stomach so you guys have got it so i'll only tell a is nothing but stomach stomach contains fluid so something which also looks like it contains fluid and it is having like this pear shaped under the liver nothing but gall bladder very simple it is nothing but the gall bladder now imagine if i tell you okay what is right next to the gall bladder what is this area what is this what is this thing very important all this okay these points are very important that's why i'm telling you what is this area here what is this area here like what, what you just compare and tell me what is what what do you think this area contains what do you think this area i don't want to know this the name of the fossa or something i don't ask anything like that i'm just asking simple terms what is the content in that area that's all you tell what is the content in this area again same thing you compare it with this what is the content there it is nothing but it is nothing but what is the content there it is nothing it looks exactly like this so it is nothing but the fat around the gall bladder okay it is nothing but the fat around the gall bladder good don't hesitate to answer you have to do mistakes now okay if you do mistakes now you learn better don't hesitate to answer so there is it is looking like exactly like subcutaneous fat so this is also fat okay very simple so it is fat that you have to understand now, imagine if i am telling this fat is showing some white uh, it's appearing more whiter okay not this white it's appearing as white as the uh, maybe the uh, the, the as, as white as the gall bladder itself okay it's appearing as white as gall bladder i am not getting that shade so what do you think has happened to the fat if fat in the fat area it is looking as white as the gall bladder so what do you think has happened you just have to think you have to do mistakes that's all i want now okay so what do you think has happened there if in this area if in this area if in this area if it is looking okay one is possibility is calcification but i am telling it is not as white as this okay it is very light i am telling it is not as white as this it is as bright as this as bright as whatever the gall bladder is looking okay however the gall bladder is looking as white as that so what density is gall bladder inside what is this density yes it is an edema shashan good it is an edema so it is an edema why did i say it is an edema because it is looking like whatever the gall bladder content is what is the gall bladder content water if fat is looking more and more like water what has happened there is an edema yes it can be fluid also yes pallavi it can be fluid also it can be fluid collection if it is clearly looking exactly like this okay like ex exactly like what is inside the gall bladder gall bladder thing it is a rupture of gall bladder or the collection which has happened outside the gall bladder it need not be rupture only it can be abscess collection anything so okay so if it looks exactly like this outside the gall bladder then it means there is a collection there but if i am telling there is patchy areas of this white white area this is we call it as fat stranding we call it as fat stranding so whenever i say fat stranding what do what do what do i tell 
what do you mean by fat stranding when i say for fat stranding means there is edema okay whenever i say fat stranding that means there is edema why there should be edema around the gallbladder when there should be edema around the gallbladder when there should be edema there inflammation of the gallbladder so if i see there is a gallbladder and around the gallbladder fat is stranding okay if i see a gallbladder around the gallbladder fat stranding is there what is the diagnosis cholecystitis very simple okay if i see fat stranding around the gallbladder there is cholecystitis what else you can see if whenever there is cholecystitis what else can be there what will happen to the wall of the gallbladder what will happen to the wall of the gallbladder the wall of the gallbladder thickened because again edematous gallbladder thickened gallbladder very simple more than 3 mm is considered as thickened gallbladder okay more than 3 mm thickening of the gallbladder pericholecystic fat stranding diagnosis is very simple cholecystitis usually we will see a stone inside it will you see whenever there is a stone what will you see in the ct you will see a post acoustic what will see whenever there is stone in the ct what will we see okay we will not see see a shadowing in a ct we will see a shadowing in ultrasound that's why i asked that okay we will see a shadowing in ultrasound don't expect any shadowing in a ct okay whatever the shadowing we see in in a ultrasound now let's go to the next section okay we are going to the next section now okay if you want to see from the beginning just observe all the changes that you have seen till now we are seeing the heart and the aorta now and the lungs i am going down now see every changes that we are seeing see it's lung now we are seeing lung aorta is there heart is there now we can see the esophagus also liver has appearing spleen now we can see the diaphragm now we can see the diaphragm around the aorta now we can see the gall bladder okay so this is how we are going down now at this section i'll again stop okay this is where the gall bladder i go one section below now i am seeing something okay i think you have to see the cine now just observe this area okay so this is gall bladder this is the liver this is the spleen and you are seeing this structure is nothing but the part of the kidney appearing see this is how we see we are going down now i am slightly upper section where i am seeing spleen and the liver and you are seeing only which kidney left kidney so left kidney is always higher compared to that of the right kidney because there is liver right kidney is pushed down okay all the anatomy that you have learned you can see live here so we can see the right left kidney placed higher compared to that of the right kidney also can you see this small structure here what do you think this structure here what do you think this structure here is good it's an adrenal gland good it's an adrenal gland okay so this structure here is the adrenal gland now just observe from here just keep watching so this is the stomach this is the stomach this is the gall bladder so this is the pylorus of the stomach this is the pylorus of the stomach this is the duodenum part see how the duodenum is related to the gall bladder okay we all study all this in the anatomy the same thing so you are seeing the stomach which is going to the duodenum towards the right side it's going to the duodenum and there is a gall bladder there is a spleen okay now observe this observe these structures and now you keep watching this area okay keep watching this area now i am going down again i am going down again okay so this is the first part of the duodenum just remember this is the first part of the duodenum now i'm going down i'll press this and now you tell me what is the structure that you see there what is the structure that you are seeing there now okay i'm sorry for that okay yes many of you got it so whatever the structure that you are seeing yes now see what is the structure that you are seeing here what is the structure that you are seeing here which is going to the spleen and then coming back like this what is this structure this is nothing but the good everyone got it this is the pancreas now why it is pancreas this is the stomach behind the stomach and it is present in front of the aorta so what is the structure so this is nothing but the pancreas and it is a sausage shaped structure going towards the hilum of the spleen everything all the description fits in there okay so this is the spleen okay now what do you see anterior to the spleen what is this what is this here what is this here what is that 
what is that what is the tissue here what is the tissue here anterior and posterior to the pancreas what is the tissue which is anterior and posterior to the pancreas all this tissue what are what are these tissues again same thing compare compare with the subcutaneous fat so doesn't it look the same it looks the same is nothing it's this is not exactly omentum okay omentum will be anterior to the stomach and below the stomach omentum won't be in posterior to the stomach okay so this is if i have to tell exactly there is a potential space here can you tell me what is the potential space that i have here what is the potential space that we have here a potential space is there yes that's a potential space is nothing but lesser sac okay why we are not seeing the lesser sac because lesser sac is a collapsed space there is no fluid inside so we are not seeing it it's just a potential space if i put fluid inside it it will become a bag and it will collect the fluid there okay so now so this is the pancreas this is the stomach you can see anterior to the pancreas and posterior to the pancreas there is fat now again i'm telling this fat is looking stranded this fat is looking stranded so what do you think has happened when this fat is stranded what do you think has happened when the fat is stranded here and here its pancreatitis very simple what else do you see with this okay i'll repeat the lesser side okay what else do you see with this if there is fat stranding what else do you expect to see here what else do you expect to see here we expect to see calcification yes good but calcification only seen in chronic pancreatitis okay if you see calcification inside the pancreas like this it is chronic pancreatitis i'm telling this is acute pancreatitis so what do you see what do you expect to see in acute pancreatitis yes acute pancreatitis you see fat stranding what else do you see what else did you see in the gall bladder same thing you will see here also you will not see blood it is not hemorrhagic pancreatitis i am not telling hemorrhagic pancreatitis i am telling it's just pancreatitis so only thing is you need to know what is inflammation inflammation is nothing but ruber tumor calor dollar so there will be edematous pancreas thickening of the pancreas edematous pancreas see how nice it is appearing lobulated here it will not look like that because it's become bulky edematous it will look a large pancreas that's it very simple you see a large pancreas you see fat stranding in the front in the back everywhere so you will not see uh, this black uh, fat here so they say that a ct fat is a friend in ct okay fat is always a radiologist friend or uh, anyone image it's a fat is friend in ct because anywhere there is fat stranding that means there is something wrong okay there is some edema there is some infiltration what will happen if there is a tumor in the stomach and it has infiltrated the fat what will happen to the fat now if there is a tumor in the stomach which is infiltrated the fat what will happen to the fat there will be if there is a tumor and it has infiltrated this fat what will happen to the fat there will be i have already told you fat stranding fat stranding is just a yes change in color is nothing but fat stranding okay if it is completely change and there is like some uh, the the tumor like structure that is a tumor mass which will be present there but if the fat has changed its color it's nothing but it is called as stranding if the fat has changed its color or fat has become smudged then it is nothing but stranding so very simple anywhere if you have to see inflammation anywhere we have to see a uh, uh, infection you just have to see the fat around you just have to see the fat around it's very simple okay so first thing is identification of the organ then everything comes handy okay so you can see this is pancreas here there is a duodenum what do you think is this rounded structure here what do you think is this rounded structure here posterior to the neck of pancreas what do you, what rounded structure will be there posterior to the neck of pancreas okay lesser sac i'll explain okay so oh, i'll explain lesser sac what do you think this structure is 
behind the neck of the pancreas you just have to know need to know the anatomy and then just you can just interpret everyone every time does biliary duct goes behind the pancreas or inside the pancreas yeah it will be having little posterior relation this is aorta that you already studied this is aorta so this is nothing but the portal vein okay portal vein where is a portal vein formation behind the neck of the pancreas the the splenic vein will join the superior mesenteric vein to form the the portal vein so that's that's how the relation i'll show the better image next now you see here what are these two structure they are nothing but the kidneys okay two kidneys okay now see someone was asking what why is a lesser sac so if you want if you see the anatomy of the lesser sac how is the anatomy of the lesser sac so there is there is a space which is present in between the pancreas okay so this is the pancreas this is the stomach okay so the space between the stomach and the pancreas is nothing but the lesser sac okay i'll draw you a better image this is the liver this is the stomach this is the pancreas this is the anterior abdominal wall i'm just drawing based on my vague memory if little mistake is there just pardon me so this is how the the mesentery goes okay so there is a bladder there is a rectum okay so this is how the mesentery goes so there is two type of mesentery one is a uh, peritoneum sorry parietal peritoneum and visceral peritoneum whatever is lining the wall abdominal wall is a parietal peritoneum so this is the parietal peritoneum it goes like this it it folds itself around the organs then it goes back again there is it becomes parietal peritoneum whenever it is around the organ it is called as visceral it's the same peritoneum continuing everywhere okay and here you have the sigmoid colon then we have multiple small intestines there will be multiple this is too big i'll just draw one so this is how the peritoneum will be covering multiple uh, small bowel and sigmoid colon then it comes anteriorly then it goes over the <clears throat> over the pancreas and then it continues downward so again from anteriorly it comes like this surrounds the stomach and then it goes downwards okay and it folds itself and comes back and whenever it's coming back it will encase the transverse colon now again the the same parietal peritoneum goes along the liver surrounds the stomach then goes down then covers the the transverse colon then comes back and lies on the pancreas see now this space whichever is formed here in between this is the pancreas this is the visceral uh, the parietal peritoneum of the posterior abdominal wall which is covering the pancreas this is a visceral peritoneum of the stomach and this will form the greater omentum okay so this is nothing but the greater omentum so this okay let's change the color so this is nothing but the greater omentum whatever we are seeing here is nothing but the greater omentum whatever we see here in between the liver and the stomach is nothing but the lesser omentum okay now whatever this space which is present inside this lesser omentum this space which is present inside the lesser omentum is part of lesser sac and it continues till here till here and till the here there will be diaphragm so till here this space is nothing but the lesser sac okay space inside the lesser omentum is nothing but the lesser sac so where is this lesser sac present it is present posterior to the stomach anterior to the pancreas okay so this i'm drawing in a sagittal image so here there is umbilicus Here there is vertebral body. Okay, you, I hope you guys got it. You get, did you do you have any doubt in this? So this is the stomach. This is the pancreas. The space in between whatever is created by the folds of the peritoneum is nothing but the lesser sac. Are you guys clear with this? Now same thing if you see here. This is the stomach. Okay, so that time I showed the section. It's a sagittal section. Okay, from posterior to anterior. This is the pancreas. whatever the space which is present in between the stomach and the pancreas so this space in between the stomach and the pancreas is nothing but the lesser sac 
but now we are not seeing anything in the lesser sac because it's just a potential space there will be little fat which is present around the uh, the pancreas which is a little fat which is present around the stomach but we are not seeing any space because it is not filled with anything okay it's not filled with anything it's a potential space that's why everyone's clear with the lesser sac so this space here is nothing but the lesser sac which is present okay okay so now going to the next section okay so this is going to the next section now we are seeing very clearly the kidney and we can see what is the structure which is coming to the kidney from the other side can you think of it what is the structure which is coming from the other side okay it's cut in the half way but it's going like this what structure goes to the left kidney anterior to the aorta it's very simple what are the structure which enters the kidney ureter artery and vein okay ureter artery and vein entering and exiting the kidney okay so it has to be one of these three can it be ureter no what are the two options left artery and vein can it be artery can this be an artery why it cannot be an artery you have to tell me because aorta is here artery will come from the aorta directly it's a lateral branch okay so it is not an artery because it is in front of the aorta so what is the structure which is present to the right of the aorta what structure is present to the right of the aorta what is present to the right of the aorta is nothing but the ivc okay but it is collapsed it is not seen clearly here i'll show in the contrast image it is collapsed so we are not able to see here okay so whatever the thing which is coming from here is the left renal vein so left renal vein always passes anterior to the aorta and goes to the left kidney whereas the right renal vein directly supplies the right kidney okay so this is clear okay so going on to the next section in this section we can see here this multiple in this section we can see here there are multiple uh longitudinal and round shape structure so these are nothing but the bubble okay these are nothing but the bubble now this is nothing but a dilated bubble which is containing air and here we are seeing this all black structure this all black thing what is this all black thing now again you have to tell me what is this black thing again this thing nothing but what is this black black thing is this black thing is again just compare with this now we have a larger thing to compare okay what is this it is nothing but the fat so what fat is it this is bubble so what is this fat good it is mesenteric now if you have doubt why it's a mesenteric fat so this is a vertebral body now this will be the posterior abdominal wall the mesentery will be going like this and at the tip of it there will be bubble small intestine okay tip of it will be small intestine i'll tell you why it's not looking uniform okay so this is nothing but small intestine so this is posterior abdominal wall this is small intestine in between you are seeing some fat it has to be fat which is related to mesentery now i'll tell you one more question i am seeing fat here what fat is it if i see fat here what fat is it i am seeing fat here what fat is it what fat is this just guess what fat it is it peritoneal okay good so aishwarya good it is omental fat so we saw the image of the omentum how the stomach was there and from there the fat is coming so omentum is the anterior most so whenever we dissect abdomen so there is we we dissect the skin then we dissect the scarpa's fascia then we dissect the camphor the camphor's fascia then the scarpa's fascia then we dissect the muscle then you dissect the 
the rectus sheath then if i dissect the parietal peritoneum and then comes the omentum okay first thing we get the omentum we have to push the omentum sideways and then we get the bowel okay then we get the bowel so this is how the we do the dissection so if i see any fat here that is mesenteric fat because the bowel is anteriorly everywhere and if i see fat in front of it it is nothing but the omental fat now some are asking why is this not looking uniform what does mesenteric contain what does mesenteric contain if this is a mesenteric membrane what does a mesenteric contain this is a posterior abdominal wall this is an anterior abdominal wall yes there are multiple vessels and they will form arcades okay and it will form marginal artery of drummond okay so this is how the arcade will be present so i am cutting at one section i will see all of this so we can see whatever this small small dots you are seeing is nothing but the vessel but see how nice it is very well defined it's very well defined whatever the round structures are well defined but at the same place if i am seeing a white smudging if i am seeing a white smudging at this area what do you think it is if i see a white smudging here if i see a white smudging here what do you think it is if i see white smudging here yes it can be fat yes it is fat stranding so what are the causes of the fat stranding here good rl it can be hemorrhage it can be hemorrhage it can be necrosis yes it can be necrosis okay so main thing is two things we have to think of necrosis and uh, sorry the necrosis in the sense we have to think of infarct and hemorrhage so mesenteric infarct will be smudging of the mesentery very simple and then we have to evaluate the blood vessel we have to see what is the cause for it everything that is different issue other thing is hemorrhage when do you see hemorrhage whenever there is a trauma if in the setting of trauma if i see here smudging it's a mesenteric hemorrhage there might be some vessel which has ruptured if it if you see in a patient who has come with a uh, abdominal pain after having food he is having abdominal pain or uh, regularly uh, uh, after having food if he is having abdominal pain then you think of a mesenteric infarct so very simple you see the smudging you you see whether it, whether the smudging is because of the infarct or is it because of the hemorrhage based on the history okay going to the next section so i have gone to the lower most section so we are seeing here is a bone okay we are seeing here the ischial bone if this is the ischial bone and we can see the small part of the femur also if this is the ischial bone what do you think is this structure and what do you think is a destructure what is a what is b till you think a and b i'll ask you one more question yes a is bladder yes a is bladder b is rectum good so what is this structure around the rect rectum so this is the rectum and this is the fecal matter inside the rectum this is how the fecal sign this is called as fecal sign you will see some bright structure some air around it so this is a fecal uh, uh, pattern so what is this thing around the rectum what is this thing around the rectum it is a fat okay whenever we say uh, para rectal or the perianal fossa or the mesorectal fascia okay mesorectal fascia that is a this structure now if if in case there is a rectal cancer and this mesorectal fascia is showing smudging what does that tell you that means that the tumor has spread into the mesorectal fascia okay so this is about the anatomy of the uh, abdomen in a plain ct what do you think this structure is just fast do you guys want me to ask questions or do you want me to explain fast and finish it off i mean uh, do you want me to go faster just let me know i don't know how you guys are finding it comfortable or not just let me know if i want to if you want me to go faster and what is the time now
okay so what do you think is this structure so this is the urinary bladder so you let's start dissecting this and seeing so this is not fat okay so what so this is nothing but skin deeper to the skin what is this this is the subcutaneous fat okay what are the layers of the fat we know what are the layers of the fat we know fascia of scarpa and fascia of camphor scarpa is a membranous fascia camphor is a the fat filled fascia so whatever the fat we are seeing is the fascia of camphor deeper to that there will be fascia of scarpa just for your surgery anatomy and this is nothing but the rectus abdominis muscle so this is deeper to the rectus abdominis muscle some fat in the uh, the peritoneum so what is this structure this is nothing but the bowel okay so anywhere if you see this uh, the structure like this which is containing a wall containing fluid inside it and it is going like this okay this is nothing but the the uh, uh, small intestine now why, why do i see only round round small intestine why don't i see a long small intestine it's mainly because the small intestine is usually folded like this when i take a section i am seeing a round structure here round structure here sometimes it might be going like this so that time i might see some linear structure okay so that's about the plain ct now similarly we can see the the ct on the sagittal uh, images so this is from the lateral side i am taking section so this is how the sagittal image so what we are seeing here is uh, the liver we saw we saw the kidney we are seeing the gallbladder this is a liver this is a kidney uh then we this is a psoas muscle here and now we start seeing the the spleen here the stomach here the ki kidney here, sorry that's not the spleen that's liver again this is a spleen here the kidney here and the stomach again okay so again if you have to seeing again if you are seeing the sagittal image rl rl has a doubt bladder won't have a, a air see bladder should never contain air inside it from where does bladder contain air bladder is having the most sterile fluid it will not have any bacteria it will not have anything it's a most sterile fluid and where is this sterile fluid coming from this sterile fluid is coming from the the kidneys and where is the kidney getting this from from the blood vessels so there is nowhere in this entire circuit where you are getting where you are getting air inside it so bladder should never have air if bladder has air then what is the condition can anyone tell me if bladder is having air inside it around the bladder there is fat standing what is the diagnosis bladder is having air around the bladder there is fat standing what is the diagnosis okay simran is telling rupture suman reddy is telling cystitis one plus is telling infection see infection anyone can tell i have taught you fat standing why is there air good shashank is thinking it's fistula good it can be fistula yes it can be fistula okay now bladder rupture now my question is bladder rupture has happened will there be air in the bladder think and answer bladder rupture has happened will there be air in the bladder there will not be air in the bladder bladder rupture alone will not have air in the bladder okay if there is a fistula with the bubble if there is a fistula with the bubble then only there can be air in the bladder if there is a fistula in the bubble then there can be air in the bladder now what what was my scenario there is fat standing around the bladder gall uh, sorry urinary bladder and then there is air inside it there is two possibility one it can be fistula i am telling there is no fistula can you guess what else can it be what is the other term for air what is the other term for air air filled places what do you call pneuma okay one more subcutaneous air what do you call it subcutaneous air what do you call it subcutaneous tissue is having air jincoba leaf sign i have taught you yes emphysema so this is called as emphysematous cholecystitis okay emphysematous cholecystitis see they will play with the words very easily the question will be uh, emphysematous cholecystitis is all of the following 
they'll give four images you just have to take the bla uh, the bladder image with air okay what is air within the the uh, kidney is called air in the kidney air in the kidney and there is fat standing around air in the kidney and fat standing around i have taught you so it's easy now you have to answer yourself emphysematous pyelonephritis good now i'm telling air is in the gall bladder around the gall bladder and inside the gall bladder there is air but there is no fistula there is no fistula but there is air in the gall bladder fat stranding is there gall bladder very simple emphysematous cholecystitis okay so that are the different terms now again just see uh, so that's a clear with the thing why there was no uh, air inside the uh, urinary bladder see now again i'll show you the parts here so this i'm going from the right side okay i'm going from the right side i i saw the liver i saw the liver there is a, uh, the colon here now after that came the kidney gall bladder is here this is psoas muscle this is psoas muscle here okay so this aorta in the midline whenever we come we we'll see the aorta so again we'll get the psoas muscle on the contralateral side this is the kidney again this is spleen this is stomach these are all the bowel okay these are all the bowel anterior okay so this is the kidney this is the psoas muscle this is the liver this is the gall bladder okay i'm going more deeper See, this is the, all the bowel anteriorly this is the mesenteric fat okay this is the mesenteric fat no see there is nothing like common reasons for sagittal ct whenever we take a ct we can break it into all the sections okay the ct is a volumetric acquisition once we acquire a ct with proper uh, pitch okay i told you what is a pitch if i take a pitch at one you are taking every section of the the abdomen is acquired now what has happened we have got a one volume of entire abdomen is acquired if i take a pitch of one so now i can slice it in any sections and see see how better i can see the mesentery that time you, even if you had a doubt now i am very clear about it and whenever i have doubt in any parts okay so it's not that easy every time when you actual do diagnose not easy you'll have to see a different sections and find whether you are doing seeing the right organ sometimes we'll miss uh, miss the organ and we might give the wrong organ because some it difficult sometimes okay so that time we have to see in all the sections and compare the parts and then we come with the diagnosis okay so again the same thing we just have to see the organs so liver stomach we can see the mesenteric fat so you see the bubble here if i go more deeper again we get the spleen here the stomach here okay and one more thing i wanted to show this is the ascending colon so this is the ascending colon see so it is right this is the posterior abdominal wall the fat in the posterior abdominal wall right in front of it this sacular structure is nothing but the ascending colon this is the liver that's why it is an ascending colon now if i continue with that see how it has become the how it's becoming the transverse colon now observe at that area see it's become the transverse colon there and then you go to the opposite side you see the so this is the transverse colon again okay now if i go to the opposite side you will see the descending colon okay see this is the transverse colon has come back now it will go down it is not gone down here next section it will go down See, it's going down here. See, see, this is the descending colon. So that's how we see the images. Okay. So next, going on to the next section. So this is how we acquire the CT in all the different sections. Now again, we can do the coronal image. Okay. In the previous image, I have this is a coronal image. This is how the coronal image. Again, we can see the the liver, the spleen, the stomach. We can see the aorta here. 
the vertebral body psoas muscle psoas muscle kidneys okay so this is how you see the images in this now if you go to this image so what's the difference that you are seeing in this image what is the difference that you are seeing here at this image what is the difference that you are seeing in this image there is some difference here there is some difference here there is some difference here what is it what is that we are seeing in this image see what what is the difference you are seeing in this image okay one better section is this so what has happened to this can you see what has happened to this okay let me show you one more image before this okay in this image only can you see this area what do you think this structure is what do you think this structure is what do you think this structure is yes it is port hepatitis so what is the, what do you think this brighter structure is and can you see there are brighter dots in the uh, the liver as well bile duct pallavi is telling bile duct pallavi i showed you plain ct also so this is not plain ct but this is something else but why is the bile duct not appearing bright in plain ct what is the structure which is appearing in this ct and why is it appearing denser so now we have to know what how can i modify a ct and make uh the, this is the same this is a window and window length is same so this and the previous ct window width and window length is same okay but only difference has happened is this is looking brighter now aorta is also looking brighter and something is looking brighter yes we have given some dye okay we give iodinated dye okay iodine will be appearing brighter whenever iodine is there it will appear brighter so i have given iodinated dye but i have not acquired when it, the iodinated dye is in the aorta okay i waited for some time what will happen if i wait for some time where will the aorta the dye goes from the aorta to veins okay portal vein it can go to the portal vein it can go to ivc okay so this is a image that i have taken when the dye has reached the portal vein okay i know at what time it reaches the portal vein so that's how i acquired a section when it reaches the portal vein so now the dye is in the portal vein so can you see here this portal vein is looking brighter than the aorta that's why i am telling this is a portal stage okay this is looking brighter than the aorta and the ivc so this is a portal stage okay we usually acquire portal or porta venous stage so this is a portal stage because the portal vein is acquiring appearing bright and the portal radicals in the liver are appearing bright so that is the different and can you see the liver it's not like before it's looking brighter and it's look well differentiated yes there you so these are the left and right division can you see here someone is asking so i'll show you from this is, this is the portal vein see this is the portal vein you just keep tracing this structure okay now one not you are just have to trace this structure i'll show a different section see now it has come down it has formed a portal vein now see now now so this is the portal vein this is the portal vein this is a gall bladder now i'm going one section down now i'm going one section down okay now i'm going one section down so what has happened to it see this is i went one section down so what is this and what is this okay only guess what is this at least what is this structure here yes this is the splenic vein okay this is splenic vein tortuous splenic vein see how it is joining the superior mesenteric vein see now it has joined the superior mesenteric vein okay now i am going up again now i am going up so this is the splenic vein which went down and it met the superior mesenteric vein and it formed a portal vein so this is a portal vein okay so this is the portal vein now i am going one more step upper so this is a portal vein i am going upper now one more section i'll go upper now 
see this is where the bifurcation of the portal vein for portal vein is bifurcating now i'm going one more section above see now what portal vein is this what portal vein is this? is it the right portal vein or the left portal vein it's a left portal vein you saw that how it bifurcated okay it was it see now from the beginning i'll show you now this is the superior mesenteric vein as i go up okay i'm going up now i'm going up okay it joined the, the splenic vein joined it it i'm going up it became the common proper portal vein now it divided into right portal vein and left portal vein left portal vein is going to the left lobe of liver again it is branching and supplying the left lobe of liver so can you identify the portal vein now okay so that's how you identify the portal vein okay so that's see now again if you trace this trace the superior mesenteric vein so it is coming down and it is giving the it is getting its tributaries from the bowel so this is how the superior mesenteric vein is okay now again if i go up now trace the uh, the splenic vein now you trace the splenic vein see how the splenic vein is going can you see the splenic vein it's a tortuous vein not as tortuous as the artery but then see how it is going this is the splenic vein which is going here okay so that structure there is the splenic vein which is going into the spleen anyone has any doubt that's a splenic vein which was going there and it was joining the portal vein and forming the portal vein now what is this structure now what is this structure here this is aorta we know that this is aorta what is this structure here it's a vena cava good it's a vena cava okay which is present on the right of the the aorta it's a vena cava now you see the trace the vena cava now see trace the vena cava how close proximity it is going to the uh liver okay so this is nothing but the caudate lobe of the liver between the the vena cava and the portal vein is a caudate lobe of the liver i just added that let's see better wait okay so see can you see the renal vein now can you see the renal vein coming now okay you see that area i am going down and that's when i get the renal vein and supplying the kidney can you see that renal vein okay so that's a renal vein that's a right a left renal vein if you see, if you go down you will see the right renal can you see now the right renal vein see small branch see so which is the longer renal vein it is always the left renal vein is a longer renal vein right renal vein is a short renal vein i, I hope everyone can see this is the, uh, the right renal vein left renal vein and if you go down okay and we can see now both this is aorta this is the uh, ivc and i want to show you one more thing see what is happening it's not clearly in this okay it's not there so this is a bifurcation of the aorta and ivc okay what is may turner syndrome what is may turner syndrome the compression of the common iliac vein by the common iliac artery while it bifurcates and goes down that is called as a may turner syndrome so i wanted to show you that but it's not clearly seen in this okay so that's may turner syndrome so this is the porto venous phase and main thing in this phase is you see how the liver becomes very bright in the porto venous phase because liver gets 80% of the blood supply by the portal vein but the hepatocellular carcinoma it will get mainly the blood supply by the hepatic artery so in the arterial phase which will be more brighter is it the hepatocellular carcinoma or the portal vein and in fact hepatocellular carcinoma only blood supply is the hepatic artery there is no portal blood supply so in the hepatic artery phase which will be brighter which is the hcc or the, the liver is the hcc in the portal venous phase which will be brighter it is hcc or the liver 
liver so what does that tell you early enhancement and early washout why early enhancement because hepatic arterial phase comes first the whatever the contrast i give it goes from the hand goes into the heart goes to the aorta then goes to the portal vein so in a hepatic arterial phase hcc enhances when it becomes a portal phase porto venous phase it will become less enhancing so early enhancement early washout diagnosis is hcc okay the diagnosis is hcc okay that, that's I, i'll teach you all that when i'm taking the liver proper i just got the concept to you the same thing you will see when you do the 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 sagittal image also the same enhancement pattern also you see how the kidney is stratified now the kidney you can see the kidney if you see the kidney here uh, see how the kidney's cortico medullar differentiation is clearly seen so outer the brighter structure is a cortex outer brighter structure is a cortex wherever the the cortex dips in is called as a column of bertini column of bertini so cortex column of bertini cortex column of bertini cortex column of bertini cortex column of bertini and in between is a medulla okay so that's how we can see the medulla so this again the image which is showing the cortico medullary differentiation so whatever we are seeing here this is nothing but the iliopsoas muscle this is the liver this is the spleen this is the gluteus muscles this is iliacus muscle this is a psoas muscle this is iliacus muscle this is psoas muscle iliacus muscle fused to form iliopsoas tendon okay so this is a urinary bladder this is a the urinary bladder rectum perirectal fascia this is the the kidney the vein the aorta ivc liver spleen you can see multiple bubbles here you can see the of a mesenteric fat gall bladder liver spleen any doubts in this this is a portal vein this is the splenic vein which will fuse to form portal vein later this is the pancreas this is the splenic vein which this is the portal vein okay so this is the aorta and this is the celiac artery superior mesenteric artery somewhere down it will form the inferior mesenteric artery so that's about the anatomy of the liver i think i took a lot of time mri class i'll take in the next one do you guys have any doubt whatever doubt you have we can clear that in this class so i'll take mri in the next class anyways any doubt in the ct images a different faces i have put it together if you guys want to see it's how you see an image see in this image also i want to show you something see how the brightness changes see here this one this is nothing but the aorta is looking brighter here aorta is looking less brighter portal vein is looking brighter understand so this is plain ct here arterial phase ct aorta is looking very bright here portal vein is looking bright aorta is not looking bright so it is a porto venous phase hepatic arterial phase okay so this will be the delayed phase almost everything looks almost the same but little brighter okay so these are the different phases any doubts you guys want to ask did i over saturate you guys this is not required as such for the need though but then i thought like it's always better for you guys to know all this to differentiate the tumor uh, from the liver i'll show you okay i'll show you images so it's okay any other doubts
Okay, any other doubts? So I think we can end the session. Uh, it was a nice guys, session. Are learning CT actually uh, this is much better for you guys? Start seeing more CTs. Just picking up some small small findings, identifying the organs. It's good for your anatomy as well as for seeing pathologies. You have to learn seeing CT because it's it will be useful for you someday. And picking up fat stranding alone is such a, a good thing that you can do and you can interpret a lot of things. With a good clinical history or diagnosis, don't need uh, much of CT knowledge. You just have to see a few uh, parts. That's it. I hope you guys liked it. And please do visit my uh, website and just put some comments if you guys have some time. Okay, I'll just put my thing. It's radio rye.in. I have started for PGs, not for UGs though, but then just visit my site also. Okay, radio rye.in. Okay, thank you everyone. So I think we can end the session. Uh, thank you, sir. It was an amazing session. We learned a lot today. It was an interesting. Uh, thank you all the time. I'm sorry, I was where I was at kept my earphones. I think I couldn't hear you guys throughout. Did you guys speak anything? Uh, yes, sir. It was an interesting session, sir. Thank you. Uh, you made it conceptual also. It uh, okay. never we, uh, we didn't mug up actually. It was full conceptual. Uh, it's a uh, it's a it's at the spinal level actually. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you so much. And no, did you guys talk to me while the discussion was going on? No, right? Because no, I sir. didn't I didn't know that the earphone was on. Okay, okay. Thank you, guys. We'll meet in the next class. Bye bye.